This is Dr. Narayan Sundaram. I'm one of the radiology residents and I'm going to be talking about one of the 22 don't miss diagnoses for medical students and I'm going to be talking about stroke. So some of the areas that we're going to cover in the lecture today include reviewing the vascular anatomy of stroke, a brief review of normal head CT, talk about the etiology of stroke going over ischemic versus hemorrhagic infarcts and embolic infarcts versus thrombotic infarcts and then touching on venous infarcts and of course we're going to discuss the CT appearance of these strokes and also briefly touch upon the prognosis complications and treatment of stroke. So just to review the anatomy this is a coronal uh, image that demonstrates the vascular supply of the brain and the anterior cerebral artery or ACA supplies this portion of the brain the middle cerebral artery, there are two of them, supply out here, and the posterior cerebral artery supplies inferiorly and posteriorly, and we'll see this on f further images. This is a maximum intensity projection or MIP image that demonstrates post-contrast images of a CTA that demonstrate the same anatomy. This is the ACA, this is the MCA, middle cerebral artery, and here we see the basilar artery coming up and forming the posterior cerebral arteries. This is the internal carotid artery. On sagittal, this is how it, the supply to the brain looks. The ACA supplies anteriorly, that's the anterior cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral artery supplies the posterior parts of the brain and the basilar artery and its branches supply the cerebellum which you can see right here. on axial or transverse images, and this is what you will be more most seeing when you're on the wards. The anterior cerebral artery supplies the anterior portion of the brain, the frontal lobes, superiorly. The middle cerebral artery supplies the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, as well as the temporal lobe, and the posterior cerebral artery generally supplies the occipital lobes, posteriorly. Here we have an axial non-contrast CT of the brain through the level of the lateral ventricles. And this is just to demonstrate a normal anatomy. We want to point out that the gray-white interface between the gray matter and the white matter is well preserved. Symmetry is your friend in neuroradiology and you also always want to look for asymmetry between the right and left cerebral hemispheres. These are the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles which we can see the third ventricle, and the pineal gland, and we get a portion of the cerebellum. And this is the same image from a cadaveric image. So just to go over the sources of stroke, one of the causes of a stroke is an embolism or embolic, which causes an embolic stroke. And frequently these originate in the heart. And we can see on this image on the right that this patient has an enlarged left atrium and we see this filling defect on this contrasted image which demonstrates a clot in the left atrial appendage and what frequently happens is that these clots are then thrown up through the carotid arteries into the brain and they cause anterior cerebral artery or middle cerebral artery strokes frequently these can also go up through the vertebral arteries, which cause a basilar artery thrombosis. Here we have another image from a CTA that goes over thrombotic strokes. And what these are caused by are areas of thrombosis that, that are formed at atherosclerotic plaques within the arteries. And you can see in the middle cerebral artery on the left here that there's some intraluminal irregularity and that can cause a clot to form which will block blood supply to the brain and cause a stroke. So moving on we're going to talk about some examples of strokes. So the two images here are non-contrast axial images through the brain and they demonstrate middle cerebral artery infarcts. So what we see here is in the region of the right middle cerebral artery, 
we see this loss of gray-white interface. So we can see on this side, on the left side, that there's a good interface between the gray matter and the white matter in the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. But on this side, which is the right side, you lose that interface and you see this hypodense area of edema, which represents the infarcted brain tissue. And this edema is also, as you can see, causing some mass effect on the surrounding structures of the brain. And another image from the same patient demonstrates what caused this stroke. And there is a what we call a hyperdense middle cerebral artery or clot within the middle cerebral artery that's blocked off blood supply to this brain tissue in the frontal lobe and temporal lobe. And that has caused the patient to infarct. These are very important because within the first three hours, if a patient presents to the emergency room within three hours, and a head CT demonstrates that there are no large areas of infarct or no areas of hemorrhage or masses, then this patient becomes a candidate, potential candidate for TPA, which is a clot busting treatment. Here's another example of a middle cerebral artery infarct. You see some very subtle loss of gray-white interface here in the fronto, frontal and temporal lobes on the right, and you see a hyperdense vessel right here, which is thrombus within the middle cerebral artery, causing an infarction. Another image demonstrating some edema within the temporal lobes and the frontal lobe on the right, which is caused by this thrombus within the middle cerebral artery, which you can see right here. This is on the other side, we see an example of a middle cerebral artery stroke. Now the thing to note on this example is that there's marked mass effect. As you can see, there is what we, what we term as left to right midline shift. That is the left cerebral hemisphere is pushing on the other side. And you can see that the lateral ventricle here is dilated and this is causing hydrocephalus. And we can see this area of edema, which is the area of infarct in the territory of the middle cerebral artery on the left. Some more examples of infarctions. This is a posterior cerebral artery infarct. And this stroke, or this area of infarct, is what we term a chronic infarct. Notice how there's really no mass effect on the surrounding structures. and there's CSF really dark, there's fluid within this area of infarction, so we can say that this is a chronic posterior cerebral artery infarct. Another term which you may frequently come across is the term of lacunar infarctions, and what these are are small vessel infarcts that cause the appearance of very small area, hypodense areas within the deep gray matter, the thalamus, and the uh, caudate head and also within the internal capsule. And these are termed lacunar infarcts and they're small vessel infarctions. Here we see another example of a middle cerebral artery stroke. And you see loss of gray white matter interface on the right side and the frontal lobes, the temporal lobe, and a portion of the parietal lobe. This is involving the entire territory of the right middle cerebral artery. And this is causing mass effect from the right to the left. And you can see that the there is midline shift. Just another example of a middle cerebral artery stroke from the same, actually this is the same patient. Anterior cerebral artery strokes are frequently anterior in the frontal lobe and superior along midline. You can see some loss of gray-white interface here in the left frontal lobe. We just want to briefly show this is a diffusion weighted image from an MRI, and this is what we use to delineate an acute or early subacute stroke. Acute and early subacute strokes restrict diffusion and will appear bright on these images. So when you're looking at an MRI, you want to see if a patient has an acute or early subacute infarction. Look at the diffusion-weighted sequences and look for 
bright areas, and these represent areas of acute to early subacute infarction. An important <coughs> An important aspect of the evolution of strokes is what we term hemorrhagic transformation. At around a week after the initial insult or initial infarct, the blood vessels supplying the brain are very weak and can hemorrhage into the infarcted brain. So it's very important that patients with strokes receive regular follow-up to evaluate for hemorrhage. So we can see here in the temporal lobe on the right, there's this very bright area, and this represents hemorrhage into an area of infarct. In this example, we see very subtle hemorrhage, very subtle hyperdense area within the right frontal lobe, demonstrating hemorrhagic transformation of this right frontal lobe infarction. This is contrasted with what we term a hemorrhagic infarction. That is that the patient has hemorrhaged from the initial insult. These are usually caused by hypertension in the Grady patient population, but other causes include vascular malformations or metastases, primary brain tumors, or venous infarctions, which we'll touch on later. The important things to note from this slide are that the patient has hemorrhaged from the caudate head on the left, and this area of hemorrhage, which is very bright on CT, has extended into the lateral ventricles. We can see blood layering dependently and causing hydrocephalus, and we know that because the ventricles are markedly dilated. This is an example of a venous infarction which I said is a cause of a hemorrhagic infarct. And frequently, your tip-offs for venous infarction are that patients have hemorrhage in very odd territories or bilateral territories. So here we see patient, the patient has a hem area of hemorrhage within both thalami. So this should be an immediate tip-off that the patient might have a venous infarction. And these are evaluated with CT venograms to evaluate the blood flow within the deep venous system of the brain. And here you can see there is an area of, there's a thrombus, an area of filling defect near the, the confluence of the venous sinuses. And you can see that there's this area of contrast around this filling defect, which appears dark. More examples of venous infarctions, like I said, these usually have very non-typical distributions. Here we see some an area of blood that doesn't follow vascular territory, so we suspect venous infarction. Here we see thrombus within the sagittal sinus. And again, this is demonstrated on sagittal images. We see this filling defect within the deep venous sinus. And that concludes our discussion of stroke and